Welcome, my name is Bjorn, thank you for joining me today. We are going to be looking at the new Unearthed Arcana Artificer. Specifically, we are going to be looking at the Artillerist. Uh, this uh, reminds me so deeply of Axton from Borderlands 2, or possibly a Demon Hunter from Di Diablo. And of course, there's many other different uh, turret-type characters that we could play. Torbjord, screw it, why not? So this character very much focuses on tinkering as a baseline for their class and uh, using tools to gain advantages in other ways that they otherwise wouldn't have had. I was actually recently looking for a character that I could play with that. I was thinking about a gunslinger, but I wanted something a bit more. And it's and it's just like just right as I wanted something more, this this class came out, so I was kind of uh, really stoked about that. So this video is going to be about me looking through uh, 1 to 20 and at some of their features and some of their cool possibilities. And then at the end, I'm going to show uh, possible multi-classing that I felt could really benefit the uh, the character's possible damage output, as well as uh, just the roleplay in general, which is what I like to focus on. So before we get into it, I have to say with the stat priority for this character, get your intelligence and your dexterity as high as possible. This character focuses on uh, ranged weapons, as well as uh, using spells and other abilities through their intelligence modifier. So these are your stat priorities. For your dump stats, I'd recommend your wisdom and charisma. They're both uh, not all too necessary for this character. So as we can see here with the proficiencies, we gain quite a few things. We're able to use light armor, medium armor, and shields. So doing a lot better than a wizard does at uh, first level, that's for sure. I really like this because it feels like it lends itself towards being that battle mage kind of feel. Um, but we don't focus, we have quite a few spells that we can use that are more, I feel, utility based, not so much damage based. Even though we do have those damage based spells, we don't have as many spell slots as a wizard. So it's, uh, it's, like, it's a give and take. The weapon options, of course, uh, we gain simple weapons, uh, hand crossbows, and heavy crossbows. I probably will be using a heavy crossbow for a little bit with this character. Uh, as for the tools, immediately we gain thieves tools, tinkers tools, and a tool choice of our own. Uh, the saving throw, we gain constitution and intelligence, very, very useful for a uh, spellcaster. And as well, we get to choose two skills of our choice between Arcana, History, Investigation, Medicine, Nature, Perception, and Sleight of Hand. Uh, the tool choice I've went with because I'm going with the Artillerist, I've decided to take the Alchemist Supplies. We won't be able to gain this uh, as our archetype. Uh, the other archetype, you do gain this as a baseline. We will be going over that in uh, that archetype video. Now, at first level, we gain Magical Tinkering. This is a pretty neat little ability. I, I would recommend maybe looking at going with a Rock Gnome with this, just because of this ability here, really. But essentially with this, we can take a, a non-magical mundane object and uh, imbue a little bit of magic into it, uh, giving it certain effects here. Make the object shed bright light within a five foot radius and dim light within five feet of that. So this could be a good uh, little benefit for people who don't have dark vision immediately. There's another uh, option that we can take here. When we when it's tapped by a uh, creature, we can emit a uh, recorded message that can be heard up to 10 feet away. Uh, you can utter the message when you bestow this property to the object, and recording can be no more than six seconds long. So, uh, you know, useful in certain smaller regards. I can think of a few, but nothing widely impressive right now. The other option too is of course that this object can continuously emit a odor or a nonverbal sound of our choice, either winds, uh, waves, chirping or something like that. Uh, this can per be perceived up to 10 feet away. I like this. This could be a nice little distraction tool. Uh, you know, you throw this into some sort of, sort of uh, cave maybe to see if something will respond to the sounds of it. Or possibly this could be a nice role-playing thing where you can't fall asleep without listening to the sound of the waves. Uh, and so this is, you just play this at night. I mean, you know, little, little role-playing things like that I really like. Also, there's another way for us to impart a message onto it. We can... Uh, instill a static visual uh, effect appearance on it. This can be a, a picture or up to 25 words, lines or shapes, a mixture of these elements as we like. We can only have one of these effects active on one object at a time. We can also only have so many of these objects equal out to our intelligence modifier. And um, if we go to do more than uh, five of these, uh, say with the 20 intelligence modifier, uh, the first one that you did would be inert and it would be gone. Uh, so keep track of the order in which you're doing them. Uh, so there's a way in which you could possibly screw over, say, a vendor or a merchant that doesn't really understand magic and be like, yeah, this emits a bright light within blah, 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 and then sell that to them for like 20 gold or something crazy like that. 
at first level. So there could be some uh, deceitful little tricks that you can have here. I'm sure, though, uh, casting Identify on this would, uh, you know, show all the properties of it and the fact that this isn't a, a permanent thing. Uh, it only lasts as long as you allow it to. Smarter merchants will be able to uh, get the drop on what you're doing. We, of course, gain some spell casting ability. We go off of our intelligence modifier of this. We gain a lot of unique spells, actually, with this. I really like this. Um, so as you can see here with the list of cantrips, we have a, a fairly large list. Um, I, I re really recommend going with mending. This will affect a lot of what we do uh, as a baseline, so keep that at hand. Another good reason to go half elf, uh, sorry, high elf, because then you'll be able to uh, have mending all the time and invest into others. Uh, the main one that I was surprised to see is that we gain Guidance. This is really awesome. I think they mixed in uh, the Wizard and the Cleric spell list, it looks like to me. So Guidance is um, amazing. I'm surprised that we get that. But then also what I really like is that at first level, we gain Cure Wounds. Like, that's that's awesome. I've been looking forward to a wizard that can use Cure Wounds. I mean, it makes sense to me. And this befits that idea to me of a, a battle wizard. Because, I mean, if you're going into a uh, battle wearing, like, half plate and, like, throwing down these turrets to fortify a position, you're going to want to... You're doing this to maybe, like, save somebody, bring them back up from uh, death. You, we also gain a whole bunch of other spells, like, like Shield of Faith is nuts. Uh, we gain Shield thanks to our, uh, our archetype. We'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, we get a lot of spell options. I really like it. But as you can see here, even though we're at a level 20, we don't have we can only have 15 prepared spells, so we don't have that many spell slots at hand for us. So uh, even though we have uh, a wider access of utility spells that we can have, um, we're probably going to be focusing more on our archetype abilities as well as our crossbow damage, and we we want to we want to save those spells of ours for those like dire moments. So this character is not exactly that person that can just heal in the group. Like you're not going to be able to do that. Your group will not survive in that regard unless you have someone else that's able to more consistently heal. Because you will just not be able to keep up with the damage output of uh, with all these spell slots that we have. Regardless, coming on down to uh, second level, we do gain some uh, a unique thing where we can infuse an item. So similar to how the magical tinkering is, except with this, we actually get to use uh, uncommon, uh, rare enchantments and place them onto our own items or to an item that we, we can gift to a party member. Um, so yeah, pretty neat. I'll go over a list of the ones that I've chosen here. Now with these two, I should mention that while we have, say, this enhanced uh, defense, we can uh, enchant a piece of armor for a plus one to it, and at 12 level, it will be a plus two. Um, we can only do this once. So if we have this enhanced defense, we can only enhance the defense of one piece of armor. If we have an enhanced weapon, we can only enhance one weapon. So whatever we have for this, we can only do this once. So look towards things that are bring yourself utility and what you are missing, and possibly what your group or somebody else could be missing. For the first two levels, I would recommend, of course, enhanced defense and enhanced armor. These are uh, some second level options that we gain here. Very powerful, and for a final second level option, we, we can make a bag of holding. Like, at second level, you can have a bag of holding. That's insane. So I really like this. There's a lot of versatility that we can have with this, but I felt that these th first three were kind of, mm, I don't want to say baseline. It feels wrong because you don't need them, especially if you aren't going to be within combat range, but the enhanced weapon is awesome. So, I mean, it feels very like this should be baseline, but it isn't, but uh, we'll see. At fourth level, we gain a, a new one. I decided decided to go here with the uh, the many-handed pouch this is a really unique uh, bag I'm not sure if this exists within the game baseline at all but essentially if this we can enchant uh, two to five pouches in which we're able to put an item in and it will appear in any of those other pouches so um, what was that game I played Minecraft many years ago it's either an elder or an ender chest I think it's ender yeah it's ender chest um, we're able to essentially, within 100 miles of each other, uh, we can put an item inside of that, and then our party members could benefit from it. So in this, it could be really useful if we need to split up the party, or say maybe the rogue needs to uh, sneak into some sort of building or like uh, a palace of sorts. They need to steal an item, they need to uh, get away scot-free, but maybe we know that we're only going to be able to get them in there. We're not going to be able to get them out. Um, maybe they will only get in less trouble if they're breaking and entering. So, I mean, there's that. But if they get caught with something on hand, they're going to lose their hand. 
So if this, in this case, we would be able to uh, put this into the bag, pull it out of the bag, and sell it to whoever was looking to buy it. Uh, there, there's many different uses for this. I really like it. I, I'm not sure, again, if this exists within the base game. I haven't seen it, if it does, but uh, yeah, very, very cool. At 7th level, we gain another choice. I've decided to go with the Bracers of Archery here. Of course, we're focusing on that archery playstyle, so I felt that this was very fitting. At 11th level, we gain another choice. I've decided to go with the Boots of Elven Kind here. You know, sneaking around, it helps a lot, especially if we are going to end up wearing Half Plate and if we don't take the Medium Armor Master, so that would uh, reduce us needing to not take that feat. At 15th level, we get to uh, choose some other ones. I've decided to go with a Cloak of Protection here. Uh, anything protection is awesome. I mean, even if we don't give this to ourselves, we could give it to our main tank of the group. You know, if they get hit less or they have better saves, it's less damage that they can take, which helps you out. So, I mean, this is very powerful. As well, at 19th level, we get one, one final one, and I've decided to go with a Ring of Protection here. The same reason for the Cloak of Protection. But, of course, like, look at this list. Look at this list. This is insane. You get to you can make all of these for yourself. You can hand them off to your group members. Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty awesome. And at third level, we get to choose our artificer uh, specialty. Essentially, uh, there's two right now. Um, I'm I'm going with the artillerist with this uh, this little uh, talk through. I guess you could call it. And with this, we do gain the arcane turret. This is uh, a fucking cool ability. So essentially, with this, we take an action. We're able to throw down a magical turret. It has an AC of 18, it has hit points equal to 5 times our Artificer level, it's immune to poison, psychic damage, and all conditions. If it's forced to make a saving throw, it, it rolls a 10 every time. Uh, if we cast the Mending spell on it, it restores 2d6 hit points, and uh, it disappears if reduced to uh, 0 hit points after 10 minutes. Uh, we can dismiss it early as an action. Um, this is uh, really cool because we do gain these three options down here. The three options, uh, we gain the flamethrower, a 15-foot cone, uh, people make a dexterity saving throw, take a d8 of fire damage on a fail, or half as much on a save. Uh, the fire ignites flammable stuff, so very, very cool. The one I feel most people will be using is the force ballista. This is awesome. Uh, a 120 foot of uh, radius, and uh, we're able to make a spell attack roll on a creature. On a hit, it takes 2d8 force damage, and if the it hits the target, it also pushes them 5 feet away from the turret. So very, very good. And as well, for the third option, we gain the defender. Uh, this turret emits a burst of positive energy and grants itself and each creature of your choice within 10 feet of it a number of temporary hit points equal to a d8. 8 plus your intelligence modifier. So again, fitting us into more of that battle mage, uh, battle lion healer, and I, I really like that. It's, uh, it's a very nice support utility feature. So again, with this, we throw it down on an action. As a bonus action, we can uh, use our, say, our force ballista, 2d8 damage, and then every round after that, we're able to, say, use our heavy crossbow attack, and then bonus action force ballista again, and it will just, we ramp up our damage with this character, and it will just keep getting higher and higher. And then we still have all the utility of our other spells and abilities. This is just going to be a constant damage output, a constant uh, temporary hit point increase. Also, we're able to move this thing around as a bonus action alongside with it uh, doing its effect. So, you know, it's very action economy friendly. I, I really, really like this arcane turret. We also gain some uh, some artillerist spells. Uh, this is where we have some set spells. Uh, shield, I really don't mind having that as a set spell. We gain Thunder Wave at third level as well. At fifth level, we gain Scorching Rain Shatter. At ninth, we gain Fireball and Wind Wall. At thirteenth, we gain Ice Storm and Wall of Fire. And at 17th, we gain Cone of Cold and Wall of Force. So some unique and useful spells in there. Again, we don't have that many spell slots, but we can still make use of it whenever we need to. Having Fireball certainly doesn't uh, hurt, and having Shield certainly helps a hell of a lot with survival. Also, thanks to us going with the Artillerist, we gain some tools of the trade in this case. That being that we gain uh, the Smith's tools and the Woodcarver's tools. So very useful for us, but mainly with this, we're able to use uh, rods, staffs, and wands as a spell casting focus for us and as well we're able to uh craft uh, non-magical wands in our spare time so we can make little wands uh, with wood carving and stuff like that that'll come into play later for us as well with this we're able to craft any magical item in the wand category it takes a quarter of the time and it costs half as much as gold usage so that's very very useful for us we can just be crafting some useful wands within that spell casting category on our spare time and uh yeah be cranking out some gold or useful items for our party members 
And finally, at third level, we gain tool expertise. This essentially makes it so that anything we are proficient with in a tool, it is an expertise in. So this is very, very powerful for any character that's looking to be that tinkerer, that person that creates items, that person that does anything to benefit themselves with tools. This could be a good reason to actually take the skilled uh, feat and to uh, invest into tools instead of uh, skills instead. So this is very, very uh, powerful, but also very, very balanced because, I mean, uh, the tools and whatnot, they they may, may not come into play during combat. I haven't really had many encounters where tools do come into... I don't think I've had a single one that comes into uh, effect. So this is more so of an out-of-combat effect, so it, it feels very balanced. It feels very right for this class that they, they should have this. Fourth level, we gain our first ASI. I've decided that um, because I did roll out my stats for this... I'm going to be going ahead and get my dexterity and intelligence up as high as I can uh, before I start to invest in defeats, since we gain so much benefit from having a high dexterity and high intelligence with this build. Fifth level, we gain arcane ar armament. This is essentially your extra attack, except it acts a little bit differently. Essentially, the only way we can gain this is if we've imbued a, uh, a magical weapon of our own, or we found a magical weapon, and then when we make an attack with that weapon, we can use the magical uh, properties, the magical essence within it. It propels the attack to uh, further again attack so essentially we take a sword we swing that sword it we use the magical essence within it like we've tapped into it and then we use that to propel us forward and to attack again so it's a very unique extra attack um there will be ways to circumvent this if uh you find it annoying uh later on when i talk about multi-classing possibilities i'm only going to go over two because uh, this video is already going to be pretty long and at 6th level, we gain Wand Prototype. Essentially, with this, we're able to take those wands that we can craft, um, and then at the beginning of each day, we can e add one of our cantrips onto that wand. Um, the main benefits of this is that, say, we... Uh, we can add a the firebolt spell onto this wand, but generally with the firebolt, if we cast it as a cantrip, we don't get to add our intelligence modifier. But with this, we're going to be able to add our intelligence modifier onto the damage for it. So very, very useful. And also with this, we don't need to have that cantrip prepared. So unlike, say, something else, we can we can have our mending, our dancing lights, our precedentation, all those useful little utility things at hand for us. And then at the beginning of the day, we can go ahead and just uh, make this wand for us. Like say, oh, we know we're going up against something that's weak against fire. So I'm going to put the fire bolt onto it. It makes sense. It does extra damage. Um, I can use this as a spell casting focus regardless. So pretty, pretty useful. I really, I really like this ability. It's not amazingly powerful, but it's also, it feels very, very balanced. Eighth level, I'm continuing on that trend with the ASIs to increasing my intelligence and dexterity, and so I've increased my intelligence by two. And at level 10, we gain the right cantrip for the job. Essentially, with this, we can now change out uh, a cantrip on a short rest instead of a long rest. Um, so this could be selectively useful. I'm not sure entirely how useful it is because we already have quite a few cantrips at hand. I mean, if we run into the case in which a certain cantrip is really needed right now but we can take a short rest which is like 30 minutes to an hour long you know like that that's very useful but yeah this is kind of a dud but it's also like selectively useful like if you're just crafting for a day and uh, you realize you you needed uh something else in order to get the job done again you can just change it out it's it's in the it's in the title of it but you know for 10th level i was i was kind of expecting something a little bit different but, you know, maybe maybe instead of it being a short rest, maybe like 10 minutes, I feel would be a bit better, a bit quicker, and that we don't need to take a short rest to do. But that could be a bit overpowered. I'm not really sure. 12th level, another ASI improvement. Again, I've decided to go increase dexterity and intelligence. And at 14th level, this is where we get a really really cool ability when we place down another turret we can place down a second turret for free so now not only do we have uh for example we can have uh, two force ballistas out which is awesome so on a bonus action we'll be consistently doing 48 additional damage which is nuts or we could have possibly uh two defender turrets up i wouldn't recommend it though because i'm fairly certain that temporary hit points don't stack unless that there's a way like i know that both of these go off at the same time i'm i'm curious about the wording with this is that um is that maybe like we will be able to use uh, the defender turret for uh, the double stack. I'm not sure how worth it would be anyways. Um, I would recommend going with uh, a defender turret and a ballista turret or just two uh, ballista turrets. Ballista turrets are really awesome. 
Also, one thing I may not have mentioned, um, if we, we can, we can cast this once a day for free, but, uh, if we use a spell slot, we can also cast it again. So, like, there's that option. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that, but there it is. And at 18th level, we gain the spell storing item. So we take a essentially a first or second level spell. We can apply that onto a simple or martial weapon. And then that spell can be activated as an action by anybody. Uh, so it's pretty nice. We can activate that spell a number of twice to our intelligence modifier. So in our case, it'll be 10 times. So somebody would be able to... Uh, cast a uh, first level spell of choice. Let's see what kind of first level spells that we can uh, throw onto a weapon that would be really useful. I guess we could throw cure wounds onto a weapon technically. I mean it takes it, we're not, like we don't need to shove it into somebody to activate it. So we could essentially put cure wounds on a weapon and cast that 10 times. So this could be, this could make you a healer where instead of you, you know, using your spell slots all the time, you could throw cure wounds on that. That's very useful. Possibly cast a jump or long strider, sanctuary, shield, uh, a shield would be a really good one to put on there. Have that as a reaction every time. That'd be awesome. I'm not really sure what else to put on it, honestly. Like, Scorching Ray, maybe, but even a, we can only do a 2d6 with that damage, so not necessarily the greatest that we could do here. Um, invisibility could be useful. Blur, I mean, there's a lot of utility things that we could do here, but I'm really leaning towards that, uh, that idea of putting Cure Wounds onto it. That way we can become... Uh, or anyone of our group could become that uh, that more effective healer. We could put a we could dump a cure wounds level two into it, and then uh, you can get a cure wounds level two off on ten times as an action. Like that's that's pretty useful, especially if we don't want to be burning through spell slots. So yeah, it it has uh, its selective utility uses, but I'm not so sure about damage output. And then at level 20, we gain Soul of Artifice. This is insane. We get to attune up to six items instead of three. As well, whenever we attune to one of these items, we gain a plus one to our saving throws as a bonus per item uh, attuned to us. So a plus six by the end of it. Very, very, very powerful level 20 ability. This doesn't just, uh, this isn't just the shit that you've, uh, you make. This is shit that you can find. You can attune to multiple legendary items. You could be, you could be just decked out in so much magical shit. And that this is, this is like, I feel like the main powerful effect of this class is just being able to attune to so much shit. Like, it can be very overpowered because, of course, that's three additional attunements that we can do. But I feel like the investment of going up to level 20 is very much worth it. It's just like that Moon Druid kind of thing where you don't get to shift as much. But then once you hit level 20, you're fucking shifting in and out, doing all sorts of crazy shit. And this helps you with that, especially since so much of our character revolves around infusing items. And look how many infusions we have. We can, uh, we, we, there are, of course, infusions that aren't uh, attunement required, uh, like the, 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 the increase the defense of arm, armor or increase the uh, the damage of a weapon, which is nice. But with this, we're, we're able to do so much with it. So that is as brief an overview as I think I could make it um, with this archetype in mind. It's a very, very powerful archetype, especially like the level 20 investment I feel is worth it. Um, I really like that they made it so incentivizing with being able to entune to uh, three different items, especially at level 20. That's insane. Um... But in case we don't want to invest into that, or if we're looking for something a little bit more, we'll quickly uh, we'll dive into another class here that I feel like will really uh, benefit this character. In order to get gain the most out of the artillerist in this case, uh, we are going to require at least a 14. This way we can gain the fortified position, because fortified position is insane. Summoning two arcane turrets, like the force blisses, that's nuts. And then with this, um, we can go ahead and add uh, the fighter, for example. Uh, the reason why I'm going fighter, I'm sure some people can uh, figure this out by now. Invest, you know, six levels into that, or we'll invest. Uh, just we'll just invest three levels into fighter right now. For our fighting style, obviously we're gonna go with archery. This is gonna help us with hitting our attacks with uh, our weapons. But then, of course, for our archetype, we could go with arcane archer. This could be a really useful one since we're already using that heavy crossbow. This could be very, very cool. But I'm thinking, uh, you know, we could just go gunslinger here. I mean, if we're using unearthed arcana stuff, why not go gunslinger as well? But but mostly if this, we're able to use guns and whatnot. That's that's really cool. And then uh, we can also uh, go ahead and add dead eye shot and uh, and dazing shot. So pretty cool. Um, essentially two with guns. I think with the pepper box to do one d10 damage. Um, so we're going to be able to enchant that pepper box now, thanks to us being an artificer and being able to enchant a weapon. 
of choice. Uh, so that weapon will be a magical weapon in which we can use our we can use our arcane uh, armament. So we can use uh, that weapon essentially to gain the benefit of this. So we do gain that extra attack from it. So we can do a d10, a d10, and then action surge now d10, d10, and then at the uh, 14th level artificer, we could have two turrets down already before the previous turn, and then we can do a uh, 48. We can do essentially 40, 10 plus uh, 48 worth of damage within one round of combat, plus an additional 20 thanks to our dexterity modifier. So very, very impressive amount of damage that we can do in just one round of combat. Really, if we really want, we can also add, because we're so focused on dexterity, another good one would be uh, Rogue to throw in there. So I'm not sure how useful Rogue would be. I'm probably just going to go uh, Fighter 6. Maybe Inquisitive. Inquisitive could be a good one because uh, we'll be able to gain insightful fighting because we're not going to be so fucking stealth stealthy once we get that, uh, that those turrets going. Um, so I'd really like to be able to have that sneak attack going for that. I'm not so sure uh, th uh, third level rogue is all too useful here. I'd much rather go uh, six level fighter. This way we gain two additional feats that we just lost out on. And those two feats that we can go with, we can go with, say, for our... Uh, we can go ahead and gain medium armor master, and then we can also gain a uh, we can also gain sharpshooter. So you know we can wear medium armor and stealth around more AC. We can also uh, have you know a better hit chance with all this and deal more damage overall off this. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's probably the route I'm gonna go. Of course, again, instead of going with this, we could just stick with the arcane archer. That would stick more us uh, to that uh, the demon hunter playstyle with. Uh, uh, Diablo 3, but I'm thinking I'll probably just go with Gunslinger because I like action so much. So, yeah, I think that um, this character, I haven't played it yet, um, but it's everything about this character, the Artificer, it seems relatively balanced. It seems that everything uh, is going to work out with the multi-classing where it's not going to be amazingly broken and powerful. There's nothing I can think of that would uh, just break its damage immediately. We get to uh, have a continuous damage ramp up as we go in combat. The longer we're in there, the more we're just going to be able to do. Um, a lot of utility, a lot of healing, a lot of potential for this character to just be so fucking helpful on the battlefield. And be able to uh, have a, a tanky 21 AC. We can also add a shield to that too. Like, fuck it. Like, why why wouldn't we just use a shield as well? So yeah, I, I, really, I really like the potential of this character. I really hope that uh, this helped... Uh, you see that there's potential with this character and you know, maybe take this and try it out and play it for yourself because I feel like this could be really, really fun. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, maybe uh, tell me what you felt. Thank you very much again and have a lovely day.